Hi, my name is Zach, and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how you can use Dialog Tree to get Dialog set up in your Unreal 5 project in just a few minutes. If you don't already know, Dialog Tree is a free plugin available on the Unreal Marketplace that offers an easy to use system for creating and editing in game dialogue. At the end of this tutorial, you will have a simple dialogue up and running that consists of a single NPC speech and two player responses. Keep in mind that this is a quick start tutorial. As such, I'll be keeping explanations to the bare minimum you need to get dialogue up and running. Future tutorials will go into further depth. I'm going to assume a basic knowledge of the Unreal Engine and Blueprint scripting. I'll also assume that you've successfully installed the plugin from your library in the Epic Launcher as normal. I'm going to be using Epic's third-person starter project as a base, but you should be able to follow along with any project that you like. With that out of the way, there are three key objects that we'll need to get dialog set up. The first one is the dialog controller. You can think of this as the conductor or the traffic cop for your dialog. It essentially governs the look and feel of your dialog and what happens when your player interacts with it. The second key object is the dialog asset. This is where you get to write the content of the dialog itself, who says what and when. Finally, we have the speaker component, which attaches to your characters and lets them interact with your dialogues. Before we get started, I want to address a small change to the dialog controller that was made in the plugin's version 1.1 update. As mentioned previously, the dialog controller is an actor that governs the user interface for your dialogues. Before the update, you had to manually drag your controller into the level. After the update, this step can be skipped, as the system now automatically spawns in and manages a dialog controller for you. If you want to use a custom dialog controller or configure the settings on the default controller, you can now do so in Project Settings under Dialog Tree. I'll go into this more in the updated customization tutorial, but I wanted to give the change a brief mention here, just in case someone was coming back to this tutorial after watching the original version. Next up, we want to create a dialog tree asset. This is where we'll define the actual content of a conversation. Right click in the content browser and select Dialog Tree. I'll name mine DLG for Dialog, and then Test Dialog. Double clicking on your new dialog asset will open the dialog tree editor. The details of the editor will be covered in a later tutorial. For now, we'll stick to the most important points. In the upper right hand panel, you can see the dialog speakers. This is where you can change the names the dialogue uses to refer to its various speaking roles, the dramatis personae if you're feeling Shakespearean. Keep in mind that this speaker name is for internal use by your dialogues. We'll set the display name separately a little later on. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll leave the default speakers in place. That means we'll have one speaker we refer to as player, and another we refer to as NPC. Let's create a simple dialogue. Right-click in the graph, and under Speech Nodes, select NPC Input Transition. This creates a node which will play its content and then wait for the player to select an option from among its child nodes. You can give the speech some text from the Details panel in the lower right. I'm going to very creatively have mine say Hello World. We can link the speech to the entry node by dragging from the entry's output pin onto the speech's input pin. But what good is an NPC speech without the ability to respond? Right click in the graph and select Two Player Auto Transitions. Speech nodes with an auto transition play their content and then proceed immediately to the next node in the chain. Perfect for player options. For text, I'll have the first option say goodbye, and the second say leave without saying anything. You can link these options to the NPC's speech just like we did before, by clicking and dragging between pins. Notice that output pins without a valid node to transition to turn red. This means that transitioning through that pin will exit the dialog, which is exactly what we want in this case. Compile and save. We've now created our very first dialog. Let's get it playing in game. We'll start by adding a speaker component to our player character so it can interact with the dialog. Open the blueprint for your primary player character. In this tutorial, I'm using Epic's third person starter project, so I'll open BP third person character. In the Components panel, click Add and select BPC Speaker Component. You'll see a CRPG version as well, which includes portrait data, but we'll just use the basic version for now. In the Speaker Components Details panel, we want to set the display name and the dialogue name. The display name controls how the speaker's name will appear in text. You can set it to whatever you want. The dialogue name is used when attempting to automatically match the speaker component to its role in dialogue. Set this to Player to match the name we used in the dialogue. Compile and save. That's the player speaker component out of the way, but 
as the saying goes, it takes two to tango. Let's create an NPC. Right click in the content browser and create a new actor blueprint. I'll name mine BP NPC. Open the blueprint editor for our new NPC. The first thing we want to do here is give our character a mesh that we can see it in game. Add a static mesh component of your choice. I'll go with a cube, and I'll make it orange so it stands out. Next up, add a speaker component, just like we do with the player. In the details panel, change the speaker component's display name to be whatever you'd like, and its dialogue name to NPC to match its role in the dialogue. The Owned Dialog field allows you to specify a default dialog asset for a speaker component to use. Let's set this to the DLG test dialog asset we created earlier. With that done, we need a way of telling the controller to start our dialog. For this example, we'll start dialog whenever the player approaches the NPC. You'll probably want something more nuanced in your own game, but for demonstration purposes, this will do nicely. Under the NPC's components, click Add and select Sphere Collision. Set the sphere's radius to 150 or whatever you prefer. This is going to be the collider that detects whenever our player gets close to the NPC. Scrolling down in the Sphere Collision's details, click the button to add an on component begin overlap event. In that event, we'll first check the overlapped actor for a speaker component using a get component by class node. If that's valid, then we'll call start owned dialog on the NPC speaker component. And we'll pass in both speaker components as an array. This will start the NPC's owned dialog with the NPC and whatever speaker overlapped it using the two speaker components' dialog names to match them into their correct roles in dialog. Compile, save, and drag our new NPC actor into the level. All that's left is to test it. Press play and approach the NPC cube. The dialog we created should start as soon as we come within range, and close again whenever we select either option. And that's all there is to it. To sum up, in this tutorial we covered how dialogue controllers relate to our project, how to create a simple dialogue tree asset, how to set up speaker components, and how to get the dialogue to play. Future tutorials will go into greater depth on the dialogue tree editor, as well as how you can fully customize the feel and appearance of dialogue. I also encourage you to play around with the quick start tutorial we created here, adding additional speeches and tweaking their properties. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a like and subscribe so you get notified when videos showcasing new features come out. If you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear from you on my Discord channel. And, if you're enjoying the plugin, I would be beyond grateful if you could take a few seconds out of your day to leave me a review on the Unreal Marketplace. Finally, if you'd like to support further development on the project, you can do so on Patreon.com. Links to all of that, as well as the plugin's documentation site, will be posted in the description. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Best of luck, and happy developing.